Hello and welcome to the LPE Author Chat Series. I am your host, Kimberly K. Labou, CEO and founder of Labou Publishing Enterprise. I'm so excited. It's been a while since we've done the LPE Author Chat Series, but this week, the rest of this week, from now and through, through till Saturday, we will be interviewing the authors, the co-authors of The Black Father Perspective, What We Want America to Know. Let's see if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Volume two. So of course, you guys know we had volume one that released last year, and this is volume two. And we are super, super excited about that. And so to kick us off tonight, we have co-author Trayvon Mosby, and he penned the chapter, More of Myself. So welcome to the show, Trayvon. Thank you for having me, Kimberly. And yeah, welcome to everybody watching. Yeah, this is super, super exciting. It's taken us a minute to get here, but we are yeah. finally here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Long road home, but mm -hmm. I'm so excited about this project. Um, this is a, a heart project for me. Volume one was extraordinary. We got so much media attention around that. It was phenomenal, but I just knew that there were more stories that needed to be told from our Black fathers. We need the Black male perspective. Oh, yeah. And so, Trayvon, we're just going to jump right in. Right. Your chapter was so gripping yeah. on so many levels for yeah. me. Um, and I could relate to so many yeah. of the expressions and feelings because of my own journey with my yeah. father and not having my father present for a lot of my life. Um, so your chapter is the first chapter in the book. Man. And so <laughs> oh, man. why don't, yes, it is. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but why don't you start off by sharing with us why you chose the title more of myself? Mm. Well, first of all, thank you uh, for this interview. Thank you for letting me in on that bit of information. That is such a shock, but yeah. Um, as far as the title for my chapter, my fatherhood journey has just begun. Um, my oldest child is two years old. So going into writing the chapter, um, looking at my contributing, my fellow contributing authors, um, I didn't think I had a lot to, to give, but turns out I just had to dig deep in um, what I really learned from my fatherhood journey so far is that when you have children, when you have reflections of yourself, little people that are just like you, you become more of yourself. You see more of yourself. Yeah. So that's where that came from. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't even realize that. So thanks <laughs> for tying that in. Because oh, um, yeah. I wonder why you chose that title. So that was great. <laughs> Um, so before we dive, dive into your chapter, because it, it's just so much in it. Um, I have some <laughs> highlighted that I want to ask you about. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was just so amazing. Um, why don't you tell us what was it about the Black Father perspective that made you want to lend your voice to this project? Mm. Well, every time you express your passion for hearing the perspective of Black fathers here in America, I mean, that's something that I connect with. Um, I have a huge heart for my people. Um, I definitely, as a Black man, feel like our voices are, we, we push them to the side or we silence ourselves enough. Mm -hmm. In addition to the rest of this American society silencing our voices and, you know, um, pushing us to the side as if we're, we're not important enough to speak up. And we're, we're not putting enough value on our words. But when we, when we have individuals like yourself that come along and give us the opportunity to speak and to be heard, um, we, we have to jump on those opportunities. And a spiritual lesson that I've learned lately is when God gives you an opportunity, it's either a yes or it's a no. There, there's no maybe or, hey, God, hold on for a second. No, the opportunity is in your hand right now. So what you going to say? Yeah. So I had to say yes to this. I had to, to make sure that I contributed my voice to this project. That's awesome. You just either yes or no. There's no in between. I love right? that. You know, right. sometimes we, we spend so much time trying to decide whether, whether or not we're going to do something. When in the beginning, we know whether it tugs yeah. at your heart or, you mm -hmm. know, you feel passionate about it or you don't. It's like either you do or you don't. So you are so right about that. Exactly. <laughs> <I don't laughs> yep. 
So the reason that I chose your chapter as the opening chapter um, was just because of your raw honesty um, mm -hmm. about the impact fatherlessness had on your life. Mm -hmm. um, and I really pray that it will open the hearts and the minds of the readers um, of everyone that reads this uh, yes. because it needs to be read. Like your story yes. needs to be heard because it shines a light on, you know, I, sometimes I don't think people realize the full impact of not having fathers. Oh, and so your perspective was just um, so eye-opening and so gripping that I had mm -hmm. to have it at the beginning um, mm -hmm. of the book because I just thought it, it was, I mean, all the stories are powerful, but to start with that piece about fatherlessness and lead into all the other stories yeah. um, was is just phenomenal. So that's yeah. why your chapter is first yeah. in the book. <laughs> Thank you. And so, yeah. And so as I was reading your chapter, um, I just felt the deep emotions um, that came from your writing. And mm -hmm. so, I, um, I'm going to read a little bit of what you wrote and yes. without giving it all the way, <laughs> all the way, um, I'm going to ask you to talk about um, some things because you dug really deep for this and it shows. Um, so in the beginning of your chapter, you wrote, most of my years, I've been deeply wounded, starting with my father's absence. That first loss of emotion, of emotional security shattered me before I knew what emotions were. Mm -hmm. As I matured, Every way that I, that I was failed by those I loved reminded me of what that first deep wound taught me. I am not valuable to anyone. I am not loved, seen, heard, or respected. No one will stay by my side. I am not worthy of God's love. I have no one to protect me from emotional harm. Um, and then the secondly, you wrote, I've been hurt for so long and no one sees my wounds. No one hears me when I cry. No one wants to help me help me heal. No one will save me from this hell, I thought. And you said the sadness that settled in and had yet to be resolved evolved into despair. I didn't understand why I felt this way or why I believed that I might as well get comfortable in my despair or just accept what valueless trash like me does, die. Why didn't anyone want to help me? Why was I both wounded and alone? I didn't have the answers and the silence formed a growing, burning anger in me. So, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you wrote in such a transparent way um, and I really do thank you for that. Um, so I, can you tell us what the experience that you endured or how it shaped you into the man that you are today, because that's some really deep stuff that you hear. <laughs> that is a loaded question with a, <laughs> with a loaded answer. Yeah. Um, man, just, okay, maybe I can start with this. Mm -hmm. As I continue to study the word of God, um, I've, I've come across the word fatherless often. Mm -hmm. And I'm among that number, I'm in that demographic. But I've always sought deeper understanding, you know, Lord, what is the cause of the fatherless? Just as I question, you know, what is the cause of the widow? And as I wrote this chapter and as I'm hearing those words and I'm reading it um, a little bit before our meeting, I'm just, wow, it's, it's becoming a lot clearer. Um, when a child goes without a dad, inherently knowing that they come from two individuals. You have a mother and you have a father. Yeah. Well, where's the other one at? You're here, but where's the other one? Where's that other part of me at? Mm. So the, the sadness that kind of settles in, okay, am I lost? Is anybody going to find me? Mm. Is that part of me missing forever? What can I do to get that part of myself back? Is, is kind of what I've been wrestling with um, most of my, my teenage years into my adulthood, um, as I start to put on the many hats of, of being a black man, I'm a, I'm a man, I'm a husband, I'm a dad, I'm an employee, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm doing a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and all the while I'm having that identity crisis. It's like, where is that part of me that's going to make me feel whole that I don't have and I don't know how to get it? So then there, there comes that anger, there comes that rage. Why can I not figure this out? Mm -hmm. Where am I? Who am I? Why do I not seem to have 
the answers to what I should know. Mm. And then it becomes, okay, now I know my dad. I've seen my dad. I've talked to my dad. And you've chosen not to be here. You've chosen not to be here. So why? Is there something I did wrong? Is there something going on with you that I, I, I'm not able to understand? Where, you know, where are my answers going to come from? Are they ever going to come? And what is ultimately the, the question that I've battled with and the, this question has pushed me into some very dark places, but what is so wrong with me that my dad does not want to be here? Wow. And why, what is so wrong with me that I am incomplete and cannot put myself together? Mm, you're right. Loaded question, loaded yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and that's so real. Mm -hmm. and so that's what I'm talking about. Like it, it just pierced through in your writing. Um, yeah. I felt your raw emotion through your words. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying that. Um, I, I am just prayerful that this book reaches far and wide because oh, yeah. a lot of people need to understand what the full weight and what the full impact of fatherlessness is. And I don't think that we talk about it deeply enough. I think we talk about it surface level, you mm -hmm. know, um, and even as women, you know, it's like, you know, what, what he's not doing or he's a, de a dead be dead yeah. or, it's, yeah. you know, this, this, but, but the root of you know, how it really affects without all the vitriol, without all the hate, without all the blame, like okay. let's talk about what it's really doing For to sure. the children and then to grown men, mm -hmm. you know, because you're a grown man and you're sharing these feelings and it's like the impact is still there. It's still so there. It's still there. Yeah. Man. This yeah. <laughs> is so good. And I know our time is just going to fly by. <laughs> I, I did want, I wanted to read. I don't know if I have a question for it, but I did want to read this part. You said, parenting has shown me how wonderful it is to be missed, to be loved, not because you fulfill a role or fill a void, but because your consistency created trust. Your attention and love are appreciated. Being a Black father, one plagued by generations of trauma, as well as unhealed and pride open wounds, one is encouraged to live fearfully with all the eggshells other traumatized people placed around me. It's the mm -hmm. scariest reality to live. I yeah. thought that was powerful. You want to want to talk about that a little bit? You can. I, I honestly think the text speaks for it. So it does. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really, it yeah. really, really does. Tell just tell me a little bit before we move forward what this writing journey was like for you. Because Man. you talked about stuff that was, you know, so intimate and your true and raw feelings. Like, what was the writing process like for you? You know, um, I spoke to you personally uh, before about how I really did not know. <laughs> how to end my chapter. Yeah. Um, I knew exactly what I wanted to write about. Um, I just could not muster up the words mm -hmm. to, to, to close it out. But I had a really difficult life experience that gave me that final, that final uh, closure that I needed to, okay, this is what I need to say. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to say. And I just pray that it reaches from there yeah. because this is my experience. I can't try to dress it up and, you know, make it to, to be a great piece of writing. This definitely has to come from a raw place. It has to yeah. come from, from what makes me, me. And it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a deep place. I'm a deep guy. So I, I got to pull it out. Um, but emotionally, um, and this is brand new to me. I'm kind of thinking about this as we're going along, but yeah. As deep as the the chapter is, I can't say that I really felt those emotions as I was writing it. As I'm reading it and hearing it, I am. Oh. But just emotionally, just you you become numb to it mm -hmm. as you live with these emotions for so long. Yeah. So absolutely, I can relate to that. I yeah. can definitely <laughs> relate to that. Yeah, you do become numb. Mm -hmm. And so, um, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to share this piece too. You said your child is asking you to show up for their triumphs and for their gift, for their griefs, show up on the paths they choose and in the moments they feel lost. 
they're asking you to engage with them as best you can. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need the perfect words for them, and you don't need an answer for every comment or question. Invest your wisdom and emotions into your children. You never know what investment will return to you through the life of your baby. Mm-hmm. What has your return on investment been? Man, um, it's just been exactly what I call my kids. Every time I pray for them, they are a gift of love and they are a gift of joy. I received a gift of love that I never thought that I would receive. Um, I've always wanted to be a father, even since I was a young man. Mm -hmm. And it has been one of the most rewarding and challenging gifts that I've been given by our our God. And it's also been the greatest joy that I've been able to experience as well. Um, My my babies are my world and they they know how to to calm me down. They know how to get me excited. (laughs) They know how to (laughs) rile me up. And hey, it it comes with the territory. Every little bit of joy and every little bit of frustration, but it is, it's it's teaching. Mm -hmm. It's humbling, it's teaching, it's instructive. It's, it's the, the most raw and real reflection of yourself that you can see. Absolutely. And I, I believe that that is, uh, that it's an amazing blessing. It's an amazing yeah. blessing. So, yeah. I love how you lit up when you started talking about <laughs> the children. That's I, what I, wanted to I ask love you my that. babies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love can tell. I can tell. That's why I wanted <laughs> to ask you that. I, like, he just lit up when you started <laughs> talking about them babies. Children are just a true blessing. Just a yes. true blessing. Um, and so... Um, no questions, but I, I just want to read these because I just love them. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> excerpt. Um, we said, as the, dust, as the dust settled, I learned that childhood trauma will continue to resurface and pull you back course, if you continue to react to it. Trauma requires a response, not a reaction. When a man responds to a problem, it can finally be resolved. That's huge. And then you said, every person is a product of their experiences and their responses to them. If you have yet to respond to the painful, toxic areas of your life, the structure of your peace will be weak and the foundation unstable. Powerful, powerful, (laughs) powerful words. I love it. (laughs) I do have something to say about that. Yeah, um, please do. Please do. Um, For every man that is listening and every woman as well, but especially the men. It is not wrong for you to be vulnerable. It is not wrong for you to cry, for you to scream, for you to yell, for you to release those emotions. But I will tell you one of the best vents that I found is therapy. And I know in the black community, it is not, it's not encouraged enough, but it helps to have somebody to talk to. It helps to have somebody to listen. And it helps to have somebody to bounce ideas um, off of. And something that I learned in my my therapy sessions that has stuck with me, um, every time that I find myself emotionally triggered by something that I experience, Mm -hmm. I've been taught to write a list of those triggers. And that turns into, that is effectively me knowing my enemy. Mm -hmm. Those emotional triggers identify the enemies that I need to confront over time. And as as often as those enemies try to attack you, which means every time you feel those triggers pulling you into those emotional places, um, you confront them with an affirmation or a statement and you make it known to your enemy that you are not um, going to be overcome by those emotions. You're not going to be overcome by um, your past. Your right. path not rule you when you're responding to your enemies instead of reacting to something that, you know, puts you in that emotional place of right. being outraged or, you know, slamming something or, you know, doing something of that nature. So. Yeah, yeah, great. I'm so glad you shared that. Um, mm-hmm. Therapy is so important. And oh, yeah. like you said, in the Black community, it's just not, uh, you know, it's, I think it's starting to get a little better. I think some yeah. people are starting to see the light. We're starting to talk about therapy more. We're starting to see it as acceptable. Oh, and yeah. then if, I, just free yourself, like give yeah. yourself that <laughs> gift. Man. You know, even if you go, you don't have to tell anybody you went. If that's you, you nope. know, just go, just mm-hmm. go because that neutral party is crucial. 
oh, yeah. and crucial to the healing process. And so yeah. I'm really excited and happy that to hear you say that as a black okay. man to other black men and black women okay. is just powerful. And so thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, so first I wanna thank you for your yes. You know, our time <laughs> is coming to a close. Oh, I yes. thank you for your yes. I thank you so much. Um, I'm honored to have you as a part of this powerful work. Um, and uh, I just want to ask you before we wrap up, what do you want readers to gain from reading your chapter in this book? Well, thank you. And you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest prayer is just that these raw, deep emotions um, that have come out of me for this chapter, I pray that those emotions connect uh, with your own emotions, everybody that's reading, everybody that's listening and watching us. Um, I just, I pray that, that the text reaches deep inside of you and reveals something in your entire life experience that allows you to heal from those wounds that are open. Um, sometimes we just need to hear somebody else's story and identify with somebody else exactly. in order to start our healing journey. And I pray that my story is one of those that, that helps you to open up and start. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So um, lastly, what advice would you share with another man um, about writing their journey or they might be considering writing their story, writing a book? What piece of advice would you give to them? Ooh, first of all, make sure your voice is heard. Yeah. If nobody else tells your story, it has to be you. Nobody knows your experience but you. Nobody knows it as intimately as you do. So tell your story. Then focus on editing it and getting it all dressed up and presentable to the world. But tell your story as you would tell it. And make sure you, you, you communicate everything that you want people to know. That's awesome. Great Thank advice. You. Great advice. Right, 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 you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Now share with the audience because you have quite a few viewers that are watching you here. Share with them how they can purchase the book from you. How can they contact you to get the copy, get an autographed copy from you? So since the pre-order campaign is over, um, you can follow me at Levi Prophesy. I'll make sure that I pass that information on to Kimberly so she can share that with you. Um, you can place your order with me via PayPal and I will get your book ordered and to you as soon as possible absolutely absolutely you guys and stay tuned because we're having the full launch uh on the 20th right the 20th coming up oh, on yes. november the 20th so be sure to join us tune in for that we'll be posting more details so stay tuned um and so we this is the end of a great <laughs> segment i was so excited <laughs> to talk to you about your chapter um and to our viewing audience thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget if you or somebody that wants to write your book to go on over to www.laboopublishing.com and connect with us there. And don't forget to tune in for the rest of the week as we interview more of the amazing authors from the Black Father Perspective, What We Want America to Know, Volume 2. So hang out with us for the rest of the week, hear more about these fantastic stories, purchase the book, um, and we, are, we just appreciate you hanging out with us. And thank you so much, Trayvon, for being our first guest in the author chat series for um, this anthology series. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and so thank, thank you guys. Me. Take care. Be blessed. Good night. We'll see you guys later on this week or tomorrow, actually. All right. <laughs> Take care. Be blessed, everyone. <laughs>